Hey, so excited about doing the very first Real Talk from our office for the Global Company Culture Association in Dallas, Texas. And I'm with Mike Ritzema. Good. Who I met at a uh, conference. I was actually doing a keynote. It was a payroll conference. You uh, were just an amazing conversationalist, but we talked about some stuff in particular that I told you, and the conference was, where were we, Minneapolis? Minneapolis. Uh, yeah. So I said, hey, I've got to do an interview with you on that because it, it really ties to what we're trying to do with the association is just understand the dynamics of different kinds of businesses. So you actually have a payroll company that works specifically with trucking. Right. Yeah, that's all we do is trucking companies and provide them with payroll services. And as part of that, we end up helping them with some HR things as well. Okay, so trucking is going through a massive, just crazy time, right? There's a huge shortage of drivers. I mean, I told you, that, and this may have shifted, but I had a, a friend who owned a trucking company. He was telling me that people get off the truck, they go across the yard and take a job with another trucking company that's paying them a dollar more an hour. I was telling you this and you said, yeah, <laughs> that may not actually be the story. So I just want, I, I really want to pick your brain about what is the culture within trucking companies? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, you know, companies that get it right, what are they doing? Companies that get it wrong, what are they doing? Why is talent such so hard to come by within that industry? And kind of what do you see the future of trucking? So that's how, you know, we ought to be able to cover <laughs> just, that in about three minutes. Just everything. Yeah. Well, I think the great question is about culture with the way that the trucking companies relate to the drivers. Specifically, the drivers are often treated by companies that aren't good culturally as almost disposable. Right. And, if and you, when you treat, sorry, you treat somebody disposable, guess what? Right. They don't stay around very long. They're, they're gone. Yeah. And uh, if, you treat, if you ask any truck driver that you've talked to anywhere and ask them about a time a trucking company did them wrong, they'll go on for half an hour and think you're the greatest <laughs> listener in the world. Yeah. Uh, if you ask any trucking company about a time a driver did them wrong, they'll do the same. Right. And so you've got to get past that. And it's as the trucking company, you've got to be the adult in the room. And yeah, this driver was done dirty by a trucking company, or so the driver says. You know, that's a great opportunity for you to connect with that driver and just be like, wow, that really stinks that they did that to you. I'm so glad you're here. And we would never even consider such a thing. Um, even if the driver was wrong about what, what happened or had a wrong version sure. of the story. You know, there's such an opportunity that they miss and they just see drivers as something we always have to hire drivers. We always have to hire drivers. Well, if you make good hires and you do the work necessary to keep them, you don't have to go hire as many drivers. Sure. So I talked to, I met a guy the other day that uh, actually owns several bars in Dallas. He's got uh, uh, Ross and Hull. I'll give him a little shout out, but it's down the street from here. And he was telling me that, especially at a couple of his bars, he has zero turnover. Okay. Zero turnover. And I said, dude, that's insane. I mean, I had just heard a number. I was telling somebody that story just uh, at my lunch meeting uh, over at the network bar, and they said that industry is 300% turnover. Okay, just crazy. You can't, yeah. you can't keep bartenders. And I asked him, what are you doing? I mean, I said, that's insane. What are you doing? He said, well, I pay them well and I treat them well. He said, it's not very complicated, <laughs> right? We can make it simple when we need to. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, truck, truck, truck drivers historically are between 90 and 100% turnover a year. Wow. Mm -hmm. And are they just going from company to company? Yes. In search of, you know, finding the right one or what's the, what's the incentive behind that? Well, I think that they often think the grass is greener. Right. Uh, I think some of the issue is that trucking companies don't do a great job of conveying expectations properly during the courtship process, if you will. The trucking company will tell them the best version of the story. Right. And then and not then deliver on it. We never go to New York City. We're never gonna send you to New York City. Three weeks in, they're going to New York City. Okay, so I was fascinated by that because you know I'm not in the industry. I wouldn't have even thought that was a thing. Mm -hmm. But it makes a lot of sense having been to New York. And I remember one time my brother and I were there, we had a car. I don't know what we were thinking. <laughs> uh, we drove up there. And so I wanted to go to the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art just to see it. And he actually went to find parking, but ended up driving around for two hours and then coming to pick me back up because he was like, dude, I couldn't find 
So I can't imagine driving an 18 wheeler in Manhattan. That's got to be like insanity. Yeah, that you know, there's that. There's all, even Long Island. Yeah. Uh, just going to make a delivery in Long Island, you're going to lose a whole day. Right. And the drivers often get paid by the mile. So if they're not turning their wheels, their wheels they're not earning any money. Okay, so that's typically the pay structure. That it's you get mm -hmm. paid by amount of miles covered. Yeah, and you'll get some things for extra stops, and you'll get some things for detention if you're if it takes six hours to unload your shipment because that's the receiver has to do that and if it takes longer than a few hours you usually get a little extra pay for that but you're much better off rolling through nebraska sure because <laughs> you're just racking up the miles exactly and it's safer no must no fuss mm -hmm. so if they let's say though that they're out on a major highway and there's a huge accident and they're stuck for two hours they're not getting paid if the wheels aren't turning generally that's true wow Wow, there should be hazard pay for that. You, you know, it's, it's tricky with, the trucking companies will tell you that they just can't afford to do it. That right. the, the model is such that trucking companies have not received a rate increase since trucking was deregulated during the Reagan administration. Sure. Uh, other than fuel surcharge, which goes right into the fuel tank. Right. And so they just had to be more efficient. And unfortunately, the drivers end up bearing some of the burden of that. Well, because the trucking company is getting paid by delivering the load. They're not getting paid by how long it took to deliver the load or you were stuck in traffic. So, I mean, I can see really kind of both sides of that, that equation. Uh, so what's the average like age range of a trucker? What's their average, you know, uh, how long have they been doing it? How many hours do they tend to drive? Well, the, you have to be 21. There's laws that are, they're considering changing that, but you have to be 21 to get a commercial driver's license to pull a semi-truck around. Uh, I would say the average driver is well into their 40s, if not 50. Yeah. Um, and as far as how much they work, the DOT, Department of Transportation, limits them to how many hours they can drive in a week. And so that's, they'll drive as much as they can. Sure. They're away from home anyway, for the most part. I'm talking right. about the over-the-road drivers, not the, not the guys who just drop off deliveries all through town. Right. So they, they want to, they're out anyway. They may as well try and make some money. Right. I, I, I've heard stories, but I'm sure some of them uh, might cook the books a little bit and drive more hours than they're supposed to, which puts a lot of risk for everybody, right? It, you know, it really does. And they've, they've stepped up the electronic logs uh, and things like that versus the old paper log days. So it's a little harder to do it. But yeah, there's always somebody trying to run a separate set of books. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I mean, we are living in a time where you can know where anybody is at any time, and I'm sure trucking companies keep a pretty tight, tight, uh, uh, you know, lock on that. So, what in, is there a company? And I don't know how you know uh, what you can or can't say. Or, sure. But is there a company that you think is really nailing it, and and that people go, I want to go work for that trucking company? Or are they all pretty even just in terms of the appeal factor to drivers? We see within our client base, we see a significant range of turnover. Uh, small companies, big companies, anywhere in between. Uh, as far as who is really good at it, I can give you some of the specifics of how they're really good at okay, it. Okay, let's do that, yeah. Uh, the main thing is, and I'm thinking of a couple of our clients in particular, they, they're very careful about who they hire. Right. Uh, if you have a driver that wants to pull a flatbed trailer and you don't have flatbed trailers, don't hire him anyway thinking he's going to change his mind. Right. And I use him, 95% of drivers are male, but I just mean drivers. Sure. Uh, wait for the right fit. Uh, I've got a client in Grand Rapids who has 30 trucks and he just won't make bad hires. Yeah. And his turnover is really low. Uh, and there are other clients that have recruiters that get paid to recruit drivers. That's their job, and they are graded by how many drivers they hire. They're going to hire anyone they can pass through. Right, because they're getting paid no matter what. And they I get, mean, if they, the driver leaves a week later, they're Yeah, still they get measured by number of hires, and instead right. of being a recruiter, one of the things I would suggest to them is to be, make them retainers instead of recruiters. Mm. The cost of hiring a driver you know, is in the thousands of dollars, the, you know, and then having to train them, and you get them up to speed, and then they leave. Yeah. And now your truck is empty again. If you had retainers and you spent that money, just just pour it back into your drivers. Sure. It, directly and indirectly. So if you, and we'll give a shout out, name of the company's. No. Superior Trucking Payroll Service. Okay, and y'all do payroll 
just for trucking? I mean, is that or? Is yeah, that... the only things we do that aren't trucking are people that I know personally. You know, my my financial advisor, my chiropractor. You you pick up on stuff. <laughs> yeah. Nice. yeah, those ones we don't. Well, now we, you know us personally. So yeah, yeah anytime we'll, we'll talk you up. to do our payroll. Absolutely. So, uh, it's a big three person, no two person actually. Or I guess or yeah, two, in Texas, two to five. No, no withholding. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's fantastic. <laughs> okay, so. If you, knowing what you know, were to go start a trucking company, yes, what would you do that nobody in the industry is doing? I would make sure that I made good hires with my drivers. I would make sure that my drivers felt like part of the team mm. because they don't often. There's a, uh, the American Trucking Association sponsors a Driver Appreciation Week at the end of September every year. And a lot of places will do cookouts and things like that. But I even posted on LinkedIn, why isn't Driver Appreciation Week every week? Right. You, you know, these, these guys don't work. We don't, none of us get paid. Right. You know, they're the producers of, of they're our output. And without them, we're nowhere. And so I'd want to remember that all the time. Instead of treating them like they're disposable and treating them like, oh, you're so replaceable. Well, we don't, we don't need you. You know, these, these it's, guys, they're everything. It's a penny wise and a pound foolish. I mean, it's oh. just, so I, I, I was on the plane coming back uh, from wherever I was with a guy a few days ago, and he's taking his entire thousand employees to a big shindig in Orlando, and it's just to put on the Ritz, right? It's mm -hmm. going to be a, just a three days of fun and celebratory. I mean, he said that the last time they did that, there were a lot smaller company, or they were 600, now they're over 1,000. He said the dividends were ridiculous of just how excited people were and how the engagement following that. I know a guy um, uh, that owns 230, I guess it is, Sonic, something like that. Uh, DL Rogers is the name of the company. I'll give a shout out to DL. So I did a keynote for him and the event was all of his managers from all of the stores and their families. He does this every year. He puts it on somewhere. It's not super expensive, but a nice place. And they'll have bouncy houses for the kids and just sit around and eat food and drink beer and talk and then, you know, have some speaking, do some training. And he just does it as a give back. Mm -hmm. I think with truckers, it'd be as simple as, you know, if they got a surprise call every once in a while saying, hey, we notice you're on route, blah, blah, blah. We know you like that truck stop. Stop off there. We've already uh, covered, you know, I'm sure they cover that stuff anyway, but we've not only taken care of your meal, but we're sending a, a meal to your family while you're on the road, you know? I mean, how, how big would that be in an industry where they get treated like a number, basically? Exactly. Uh, one of the things, even something that costs them zero dollars, the driver comes back to the terminal, have one of the high executives. Just go out there, shake their hand, and say, "Thanks for everything that you do." Yeah, not not because they did something heroic that day, but right. You know how to go on the road. Yeah, how, we, how, we can't do this without yeah. you, and we want you to know that, and we want you to know that you're appreciated and you're valued here. Yeah, even something like that, and mean it, of course. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the meaning it's always that helps nice. too. But the uh, even something like that would go a long ways. These the drivers aren't generally the most emotionally. I think self-aware. Yeah. And so they don't realize sometimes that they need that. Right. But everybody needs that. Everybody. Everybody needs that. And it goes a long way and it yeah. costs you absolutely nothing to do. And you feel good when you're doing it too. Sure. Uh, another thing you can do is for trucking specifically, when the, a lot of times this, there's this high turnover, two thirds of it is in the first 90 days. That's why the turnover is so high. It's not everybody leaving on their first anniversary. There's, right. You turn over that same truck a lot of times. You know, once the driver's been there for two weeks, have the president or somebody very high up in the company call the driver, say, hey, you know, hi, I'm Mike, I'm the president of Mike's Trucking Company. How, if we kept our promises to you? When we talked to you and we were hiring you, we told you we would do things. Are we keeping our promises? We try to be people of our word, but we'll never know without yeah. asking. Even something like that, it would, costs you nothing. Well, and not only that, when you ask, they tell you, and if yes. they go, hey, you know, yeah, I appreciate it, but Y'all told me I wasn't going to be going to New York, and now I'm going to New York. And, <laughs> and here I am. We were talking at the conference about even strategies for that, where if you wanted people to go to New York, come up with some sort of premium pay structure where there's a bonus yep. or 
And, you know, you and get some a, companies do that. You get an extra day vacation if you make a New bucks. York trip or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So why do we have such a driver shortage? Is that still a thing or has that been rectified? There are differing schools of thought on the driver shortage. Uh, there are people that always say, oh, driver shortage. And there are, other, there are other articles out that suggest that there's not. And my thought is the driver pool of, of potential drivers for you is like a lazy river. Right. They just keep circulating around. And right. so if you can be, there's plenty of drivers looking for jobs. If you can be better at attracting them and retaining them, it's everybody else's problem. I, this is crazy making to me because obviously, you know, I started the Global Company Culture Association. Right. I speak on company culture all the time. I write books on this stuff. Just not having the foresight to say, if we become the best place to work for, mm -hmm. the place that attracts and retains top talent, you know who, the, the, the best recruiters for your trucking company should be who? The truckers. The drivers. Because when the drivers pull into a truck stop and say, mm -hmm. I work for such, oh man, I hate my job, I hate my life. Dude, you gotta come be a part of this, right? Because I love my job, they take such great care of me. Can you imagine the money they would save in the recruiting, the amount of money they would save in the lost opportunity with not having the drivers or that turnover? I just, I don't get it. I don't get why uh, more companies aren't realizing that company culture, I, and this is a very bold statement, is everything. <laughs> I mean, I was telling you, you know, uh, Gary Ridge took WD-40 from 250 million to $2.2 billion by focusing on culture. So. Hopefully, there's some trucker uh, companies, some truck companies listening to this, and some drivers listening to this. They'll put their mind to it. Maybe they'll even contact you or me Feel or free. both and say, "Hey, you know, help us out here. What can we do?" Um, so, oh, I had one more question for you. Yeah. Ah, and we talked about this at the when I met <laughs> you. Driverless trucks. How yes. imminent is that? And how much does that really kind of, first of all, disenfranchise all the drivers that we do have? but also just change this, the trucking industry completely when you don't have personnel. There are, it could go any number of ways. My personal thought, and this is not based on any great data that I have, is that there's a reason we haven't built nuclear power plants in 40 years. Uh, we had the Three Mile Island and everybody got scared. Right. And so, I don't want something bad to happen with a driverless truck, but just laws of large numbers is if we have a driverless truck, something bad is going to happen with a driverless truck, and I, I wonder if that's going to scare people off. But they seem to keep trying to improve the technology. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting because if it works, you're going to have hundreds of thousands of people now that have just been obsoleted for the most part because all you need them for is last mile. Right. Uh, but if it, and if it doesn't, I think it's going to take a while to adopt. Uh, a new truck with a driver in it is in the neighborhood of $180,000. So that's already a significant capital investment for one truck. Right. And that's just that's not the trailer or anything. So a driverless truck is going to be significantly more. And so not a lot of people are going to be able to afford them right away. So I think I, the you know I hadn't thought about that because yeah, you're saving salary, but if you're spending three times on the truck, and, and trucking is already a cash tight industry all right. the time because you've got to buy the truck and you've got to buy the trailer and the fuel and the insurance and pay the driver all these things before you make dollar, collect dollar number one. Right. And so you've gotta be really well capitalized to do that. And so you could see some of the big players start waiting in that water, but 97% of trucking companies have 20 trucks or less. Yeah. And so they're gonna, they're gonna be slower adopters. It is interesting though, the emotional uh, factor, because I remember uh, a year or two ago, there was the driverless car that hit that person and I watched the video of it and I saw it and I said, I would have hit him. Anybody driving right. would have hit him. I mean, you're on a dark road and someone steps out, you know, yes. 10 feet in front of you, you're going to hit them. Yes. But that got, that got dinged and the reality is with, if we have a driverless truck incident, there may have been 28 driver incidents that same day, but those wouldn't get highlighted. It'd be like, see, this is why this is a exactly. problem. Exactly. So. It's the, again, it's just the unfortunate incident for the one driverless truck that is gonna wreck it for them versus the driver trucks. We are, we're used to that. Even though most of those are the, not the truck's fault. Sure. 
there's still, it's kind of, we're all just used to, that's how it works yeah. right now. So any change in that, everybody thinks that's in addition to the 28 you mentioned. Right. Uh, one thing I, if I can touch on that you had, you had talked about the drivers recruiting other drivers. Right. Companies want to do that. They all will tell you. Every trucking company will tell you they want to do it. But the part that they're missing, and I think this really ties into what, what you talk about, is if you want the truck driver to be an ambassador for your company, which is my term for it, you've got to treat them like an ambassador. <laughs> You know, you can't treat them poorly or treat them only as well as you absolutely have to and then expect that they're going to go out and sing your praises. Not going to happen. No, not, not you often. You can't incentivize them enough to make that happen if they don't really believe in it. Yeah, because if you say, hey, uh, Darren, I'm going to pay you X amount to bring people into my really crappy restaurant, <laughs> right, and right. get that food, I'm not going to leverage my friendships that way, right? But if I love your restaurant, you don't have to pay me a dime. I'm going to be telling everybody, and you treat me like gold. Exactly. You know, we've got a place close to here that we've I've brought so many people in there introduced to because we, we happen to just love the food, we love the environment. They treat us as the you know where everybody knows your name kind nice. of thing, and that's where people get excited about a company is when it's the real deal. You can't fake that. Right. And if I'm a trucking company and I put an ad out telling you how great I am, it, it falls on deaf ears. Yeah. But if you have a driver who tells you how great they are. Yeah, that's going to carry much more authenticity than anything I could say. Yeah, as the owner. Okay, so Mike, by the way, you're doing something that is the one number one thing you can't mess up. I mean, you want to really upset your people, jack up payroll in some way, right? Right. Not, not get paid for a day or something. Yeah. So you're holding that that front line kind of forward. That how many companies like yours are there that focus particularly on that industry? Or are you guys uh, pretty alone in that? Uh, that do it exclusively, I believe it's just us. Okay. I mean, there, everybody has a few trucking companies here and there, but the industry is so different than other things that we're just, we're the square peg for the square hole. Yeah. I love it. So how do they find you? How do they find me? Uh, www.truckingpayroll.com or they can go to LinkedIn, LinkedIn slash Trucking Payroll, Facebook slash Trucking Payroll, Twitter at Trucking Payroll, uh, call us at 616-608-1800. Love it. Any of those. So by the way, you're here in Dallas because you came to see a client, a customer that you hadn't met. Is yes. that right? Yes. You flew all the way down here. Yes. And are flying all the way back. Yes. And you came just for that sole purpose. Well, I had to talk to you, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that, yeah. Says, that says a lot about, uh, you know, the investment that you're making in your customers because you don't have to do that. Yeah. It's, for us, you've we, got their business already. Right. If The way that we look at it, our philosophy at our company is... We don't make anything. We don't make a table. We don't, we're not a trucking company that delivers things from A to B. So there's nothing tangible that we do. Our whole output is a customer experience. Yeah. And so and to that end, I tell trucking companies, think of your driver or turnover as driver experience. Yeah. Put it in their shoes. Be, act like you're one of them and see how you like it and see what things you can change to make it better. I love it. That's, you know, that's why Undercover Boss and yeah. shows are such a big hit because they get out there, they start, uh, you know, it's always fun to watch them try to run the system and they're <laughs> looking around like, this is out of control, I can't do this, there's too much stuff to do and you know, the time allotted and they start realizing just what they're putting their people through and I, th there's another great idea, I'd love to see some of the owners and managers of truck companies go on a ride along, Sure. say, hey, I wanna go w with you on that 10 hour trip and I, I wanna learn about your experience and what, how we can make your life better. So. Hey, it has been a pleasure. Thanks for making the time and Thanks getting by to do this uh, interview. And I look forward to hearing it. And I want to hear offline about any trucking companies we should have uh, as the association have our eyes on as okay. you know, maybe some that we can highlight and kind of uh, uh, put out there. So, Mike Ritzema. Excellent. Thank you. What is it? What's Ritzema mean? Dutch. It's a Dutch name. It's a Dutch name. Yep. Okay. Very cool. Well, great to have you. <laughs> Thank really you. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank for having you. me. I'm going to go start a trucking company now <laughs> because we'll be able to, I mean, I know you can do your payroll. So, yeah, <laughs> I've already got the payroll. But seriously, I mean, hey, you want a great business, go start a trucking company and get it right and, and watch the drivers flock to you. And, you know, that's the best way to dominate an industry. Culture. It's culture, people. All right. Thank you.